Joining us from Duke University is Dr. Anik Desjardins. We're talking about glioblastomas. Thank you for stopping by. You're welcome. So we've had a lot of different presenters coming through here. Your poster is different in that we're not looking forward, we're looking back. We're can, look you, can you talk about that? Yeah, so the poster was different where uh, what we did was really a retrospective a review of our patient treated since 2009. So what we look at our patient treated from January 1st of 2009 until and our cutoff was uh, May 12th of 2012. So we look at the patient treated during that period, a glioblastoma patient that had a new diagnosis of glioblastoma and look at what was the survival of those patients and what were the subgroup of patients that did better. And the reason why we did that is what we can see is right now the historical control that we were using in the past and what we were building phase two study on when we were using you know, the old historical control, clearly it's not appropriate anymore. Our patients, despite the fact that we have had maybe drugs that had minimal benefit overall in increasing the survival of our patient, our patients are surviving longer just because of all the supportive care and everything else we're offering them. What would you say were some of the key findings? Key findings, so what we saw was really, um, so the median, so when we look at our patients, so normally what we report is a median overall survival of the patient. And in this retrospective analysis, we were looking at mostly patients that had been treated on bevazuzumab as newly diagnosed patient. And two phase three study were recently published that showed no ad survival advantage of using bevazuzumab in newly diagnosed patient. What we showed is that at Duke, our practice when we treat patients not on a clinical trial, so we use patients that were not on a clinical mm -hmm. trial, patients that were in the community, our median of overall survival for all of the patients was 23.3 months. When, when we look at the other at the phase three study that were recently published, their median overall survival was between 15, 16, 17 months, so more around that. And so our historical control uh, from our standpoint as a median overall survival 23.3 months. Of course, we cannot compare for the phase three study. It was not a prospective trial that we did. It was not a randomized study where patients were treated or on bevazuzumab on top of their standard of care, so which is the stoop regimen in the newly diagnosed patient. Uh, so we didn't have a control group but it was really to look at where are we, what is our experience. And so for all of the patients where their median overall survival was 23.3 months, and then when we look at the patients that had, were, were able to have a complete resection of their tumor, so gross total resection patient had a median overall survival of 20 over 29 months, which is much better than what has been published. So how will you be moving forward as you look uh, backwards? So what, has, so what we're looking at now also, so moving forward, is we're looking now at the patients that we started. So the, the, this retrospective analysis was really based on looking at the utilization of bevazuzumab and what is the right timing to use bevazuzumab. Do we use it when the patient are first diagnosed or do we use it when they have recurrent disease? So now what we're looking at is the same patient during the same time period, January 1st of 2009 until May 12, 2012, the patient that we started on bevazuzumab at the time of progression, how did those patients do? And are they different than the patient that started on bevazuzumab from the time that their tumor was first found? So we were talking about how so much oncology research is focused on where are we going, where are we going, where are we going. Absolutely. So you feel really good about this, about where we are and where we've been. Where we've been and then knowing also it will help us and so, you know, hopefully answer the question, is there a difference between starting a bevacizumab early or later? And the other thing also for us, it was important to see what is, how are we doing right now? And what, where do we need to go moving forward? And because what is our baseline overall survival of our patient? And then how our next treatment and our next trials that we will initiate, how much better we will be able to get over what we already have. Thank you for joining us in the present. We look forward to talking more with you in the future. Thank you very much. Very good. Thank you.